Hi, welcome to this video on printing to the command line terminal and formatting a string. My name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley. In this video, you'll see multiple ways you can do print statements. This may seem like a pretty unsexy topic, which it is, but you'll need these skills in order to program in Rust. First, we'll talk about multiple ways of printing to the terminal with print line or print. Then we'll talk about using these same techniques to create a formatted string variable. And I'll also describe a little deeper about what's going on underneath the hood and briefly touching upon macros. I've created a brand new project for us to play with. I want to introduce you to the print line statement that we'll be using throughout the course. You may have noticed me using this in previous videos, but let's do a little deeper dive. In my main function, I'm going to use the statement print ln exclamation point to print out how to partner on separate lines. Okay, so let's run the project with cargo run and you'll see the output in the terminal. The print ln stands for print line, meaning print to the terminal and then end it with a new line. Easy enough. A similar method is if you get rid of the ln. The print statement will just continue on the same line. Sometimes that's useful if you're in a loop and you want to print out each character of a string. Usually I use print line if I want to print to the terminal though, so things don't get all mushed up and stuff. Okay, let's clean that up. Now I want to add a little data to my print line statement. Printing does little good if you can't use any data. To do that, we put curly brackets, which indicates you'll be providing some extra data to print out. Notice that even though the curly brackets are in a string, the compiler knows that you need to also include data to fulfill the curly brackets. If you hover your mouse, it will give you more information. Let's go ahead and put in a hard-coded value and run it. And it prints out our data to the terminal. But hard-coding data isn't very valuable either, so let's create a variable and use that. You can add more curly brackets as needed, and the compiler will check that you have data to fulfill every spot. Once I fill in data to satisfy all brackets, the compiler error will go away. Let's run it, and sure enough, the variable is included in the printout. In multilingual apps, often the order you want to print the data depends on the language you're printing. For that, we can use a zero-based numeric placeholders like so. This says that the first data element it sees goes here, and the next one goes here. Let's go ahead and run that. And if I flip them around, you'll notice the order flips in the output. If you don't put numeric placeholders, it'll just replace the curly brackets in the order in which it sees the data. You can also be more explicit about it and don't have to rely on ordinal positions. For example, I can say the first bracket is identified as first name, and the second bracket is identified as last name. When I pass data into it, I'll be forced to be specific about what bracket I'm fulfilling by using the bracket ID. And I'll run it just so that you see I'm not lying. And if I want to reverse that, it's a simple thing. Note that the compiler will know if you didn't provide the bracket identifier and will give you a clear error about what's wrong. As I've said, the compiler is fantastic and your best friend. Okay, let's clean the palette again. So far, we've printed out data for primitive data types like floats and integers. But I'm going to create a more complex data type, such as a struct. We'll get into structs pretty soon in a later video, but hang on for now and just know that I'm using it for a reason to show you something. This struct will just be two fields and I'll call it A and B. It doesn't really matter what I call those fields right now. Let's create a variable of Doug's data and use it within our print line statement. In this case, we get a compile error. If I hover my mouse, I get the message that Doug's data doesn't implement display. What that means is that I haven't told the program how to print Doug's data to a string because it's a more complex structure than a primitive type. There's a couple ways to handle this. 
You can do it manually by implementing the display trait for the struct, and we'll do that in the traits video. Or you can use a common shortcut by putting a derive debug on top of the struct like so. For this to work in our print line statement, we'll also need to put a semicolon and a question mark in the brackets, which tells the compiler it's a more complex data type than a primitive. Now that it compiles, let's go ahead and run it. So this prints out my struct in an inline manner, which is good, but sometimes your data is so complex that an inline representation is not very helpful and hard to read. In that case, you can put a pound sign in between the semicolon and question mark and we'll do a pretty print, meaning give it a little extra formatting. That looks better. For large complex data, often I'll pretty print it because it's just so much easier to read. You can choose whichever is better for your situation. Similar to how we were able to determine what position multiple data inputs should be printed, we can do the same thing here. Let's create another variable and include that in our print statement, but force the order in the string with an ordinal. I'll just give my other data arbitrary values just so that we can distinguish it from our first data variable. To enhance our print line, I'll add another bracket and then add our variable. Okay, so coming back to why I was doing this, I want to give it a position based on a number like we did before. So let's put a zero and a one, and you'll see it's the same concept. If we run that, we see the original data is first and the other data is second, but we can easily swap that around by switching the one and the zero. And now we have our other data printed out first. There will be situations where you want to format a string for other reasons than printing to a terminal. In that case, you can use the format statement. It works the same as the print statements, except that it returns back a variable instead of printing to the terminal. It's now a string and you can use it any way you like from there, including if you want to print it to the terminal for some reason. I'll print it just to make sure we can verify it was placed in the variable correctly. I want to briefly switch gears and talk about this curious exclamation point. You'll see this from time to time and not just on print statements and it's important you understand what it is. Rust has something called a macro. Specifically, the exclamation point indicates it's a declarative macro. There are multiple types of macros and in fact the debug annotation is also a macro called a procedural macro. I find it ironic that a declarative macro is used in a procedure and a procedural macro is used on a type declaration, but hey, whatever. Macros are beyond the scope of this video, but you can think of them as the ability to enhance the Rust programming language. In the case of PrintLine, someone took the tedious multi-line code of printing complex strings combined with some input data to the terminal and condensed it for you into a single line of code. Quite handy. It simplifies your job as a programmer. You can create your own macros, and in fact, I encourage you to. But that's a topic for another time. For now, just know that when you see an exclamation point, it's really a language enhancement that somebody wrote up as a macro to make your life easier. To sum up, there are multiple ways to print the terminal and creating formatted strings. We touched upon print line, print, and format. You can use the brackets to print data. You can order data with numeric placeholders like 0, 1, and 2, etc. You can use explicitly named placeholders like first name. You can print more complex data structures with the debug macro and you can also pretty print with the pound sign. If you want more information on the print statement, you can visit the following URL. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley, and I'll see you next time.